You heard this text a moment ago that when they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there. And there was an inscription placed over his head that said, this is the king of the Jews. Now next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. Next Sunday is Hanging of the Green Sunday. We are going to pull out all the stops next Sunday. Lots of people, lots of decorations, lots of music. So I thought I'd just try to keep it simple today so that we don't overshadow the first Sunday of Advent next week. So we're going to keep it simple today. I'm just going to tell you three stories. I want to tell you a Roman Catholic story. I'm going to tell you a Babylonian story. I'm going to tell you a Jesus story. We're going to throw a song in, and then we're all going to leave, go eat lunch, and go home. Is that okay? All right. Uh, Roman Catholic story first. You know, when you spend part of your childhood as a Roman Catholic, you forever carry the weight and the joy of Roman Catholicism, all things Roman Catholic, particularly the Christian calendar. You can't grow up in a Roman Catholic church and not have a real sense of all of the holy days and the holidays and the feast days that are part of the calendar. And when your pastor has spent part of his childhood as a Roman Catholic, you have to carry the weight and the joy of all these Roman Catholic holidays and insights on the feast days. Today is Christ the King Sunday, and I thought I would bless you with the story of its origin. Are you ready? You know, it is the newest, one of the newest of the holidays on the Christian calendar. Uh, Christ the King Sunday was not placed on the calendar until 1925. It was Pope Pius XI who sanctified this day and named it Christ the King Sunday. It was originally on the Sunday before All Saints Day because Pope Pius wanted to, to proclaim that Jesus was the King of all people and all saints. It was later in 1969, Pope John VI moved it to the last Sunday of the Christian year, the Sunday before Advent. And he said, Christ isn't just the king of people and saints, but in my lousy Latin, Christ is Christi Universorum Regis. He is the king of the whole universe. So this is going to end the Christian year before we start Advent, and we're going to proclaim that Christ is the king of the whole universe. Now the purpose of this holiday, according to Pope Pius, who inaugurated the holiday, was this. He did it to establish and combat growing secularism and nationalism in the nations of our world. This holiday, he said, is established to combat the growing secularism and nationalism in the nations of our world. Well, that worked, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that put a stop to all that secularism and nationalism. Certainly slowed it down, didn't it? Uh, no. But Christ the King Sunday was sanctified as a feast day and a holiday, listen close, in an attempt to establish control. Christ the King, a title given to Jesus by Pope Pius in order for the church to obtain some power over the secularism and nationalism in the world. That's the Roman Catholic story. Here's a Babylonian story for you. Each year in Babylon, once a year, the Babylonians celebrated a feast called the Akitu Festival. Akitu. Say that with me. Ready? Akitu. That's just to wake you up after the history lesson. I know how it goes. It was their way, it was their festival for the atoning of their sins. What they did during the Akitu Festival appeased the gods so that the Babylonians would not be punished for their sins. And here's how the festival worked. At the beginning of the day, the day of Akitu, the king of Babylon would mount a donkey and ride the donkey into the city, and he would ride through the city while a parade was being thrown in town, and people would cheer him and throw gifts at him and sing songs to him and bow before him. But when he got to the other side of the city, the soldiers would strip him and beat him and spit on him and mock him and kill him. The king's death each and every year appease the gods for the sins of the people. Now there's more than one or two of you astute folk out there who are saying to yourselves, that sounds a lot like Palm Sunday and crucifixion to me. And then your astuteness kicks into fifth gear and you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute. Nebuchadnezzar was king over Babylon, and he was king for many years. And Belteshazzar was king over Babylon, and he was king for many years. How could this be if the king is killed annually? 
Oh yeah, I forgot that part. Each year the king would choose a slave to be king for a day. Oh yeah, they let him be king for a day. He got to ride the donkey into town. They put a crown on his head and a robe on his back, and the people sang praises to him and threw gifts at him. He received all the praises and the songs of the people, and when he got to the other side of town, they would kill him. It was a practice of humiliation and cruelty. Call someone king and treat them like a king for a moment and then kill them when you're through with them. And so they came to a place that is called the skull and they crucified Jesus there. And above his head, there was an inscription that said, this is the king of the Jews. The sign above Jesus' head as his crucifixion was there for the purpose of humiliation. Yeah, this is the king of the Jews. It was just a caption in a poor political cartoon. It was just a caption on a Facebook meme. Pope Pius XI gave the title king to Jesus so that the church could obtain power. Pilate gave the title king to Jesus so that he could humiliate him. Because what king hangs on a cross, stripped, beaten, covered in insult and spit and dying? That's the Babylonian story. Here's the Jesus story. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. And at the end of the story in the Gospel of John, John, it says, Now when the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they were amazed. And Jesus saw that they were about to come and force him to be their king, so he withdrew to a mountain to be alone. Jesus saw that they were about to force him to be a king, so he withdrew to a mountain to be alone. Later in the same gospel in John chapter 15, Jesus is sitting privately talking to his 12 disciples, and he says to them, I want you to know something. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know the king's business. I call you friends. Christ the king? It's really not a title Jesus ever sought or claimed. In fact, in a lot of ways, it really just it doesn't fit. To call Jesus king is to really, it, it goes against the dismantling and the inclusiveness and the non-hierarchical work of the gospel. I mean, to call Jesus king distances him from his disciples and his subjects. Royalty is untouchable. Royalty lives separated from the commoner. If Jesus is a king, then Jesus is not worldly, and we are not godly because we have to live in different places. That's just the way it is with kings and commoners. This image of Jesus, this image of God, doesn't quite fit when the one called Emmanuel is God with us. Now, I was pondering this great truth during my run yesterday, and some song lyrics popped into my head. You ever just have song lyrics pop in your head, and then you have to figure out where they were from? And the, the lyrics that I could remember were, King of kings and Lord of lords, my knees would rather bend before a teacher and a friend. And it took me almost two hours to figure out it was one of Kyle's songs. <laughs> and so I called him on short notice yesterday, and I thought, you know, why quote it? when he can sing it. There are nights my weary mind can find it hard to pray. Days when you seem awfully far away That's when I go back in time to how it must have been to know you as a teacher and a friend There are 
just to walk along and talk and hear the way you laugh ask the things i've always longed to ask king of kings and lord of lords my knees would rather bend to bow before a teacher and a friend just to learn at your feet hear your voice answer me wisdom to guide me companion beside me streets of gold would just get old and pearly gates big deal i need someone wise and kind and real stay with me and i would be eternally content to be with you my teacher and my friend Wisdom to guide me, companion beside me, beside me. So when I need to simply be with you, I go within and walk with you and talk with you, my teacher and my friend. <laughs> That's three stories in a song, so let me wrap this up. I'm not going to start a petition today to take Christ the King Sunday off the liturgical calendar because I'm a good former Roman Catholic. But at least for today, at least for this year, I'm going to call it Christ the Friend Sunday. Jesus isn't interested in controlling us or having the church control us or having ministers control us. That's the old Roman Catholic story. And Jesus isn't interested in us mocking him by making him king in our life for a day. You know, Sundays you get to be king. When I need something, you get to be king. When I want to feel good about my faith, you get to be king. But the rest of the week, the rest of my life, stripped of power and my attention, that's the Babylonian story. Now, Jesus isn't interested in being a king at all. In fact, he withdrew when they tried to make him a king, and he told his disciples, I have called you friends. Let me go wherever you go. Let me walk with you through every chapter of life. Let me be your confidant in the situations of your life. Enjoy my presence when you're alone with me in prayer, when you're gathered with your faith family. Christianity is not about being lorded over by a demanding God or lording over other people in the name of God. Jesus he didn't care if you were a caught thief on the cross working one more con trying to get into heaven or if you were a soldier gambling for gain or your own ego or if you were a doubtful, scared, deserting disciple or a grieving mother or a misguided religious leader or a pressured government official or just an ignorant part of the crowd, Jesus is not interested in being our king. Jesus is interested in being our friend all of us. My whole childhood, and when I heard preachers preach this story of the crucifixion, I was told that the darkness came when Jesus died because Jesus was holding all the sins of the world and God had to leave or turn his back or turn away and there was darkness because God can't look at or be around sin. That's probably the most misguided theology I've ever heard in my life. The primary criticism of Jesus during his life was he eats with and befriends 
sinners. Jesus' nickname was Emmanuel, God with us. God has spent God's whole life since creation wanting to be with us, not to rule over us or be mocked by us or ignored by us, just wanting to be our friend. So today is Christ the Friend Sunday. Let's pray. Loving God, you are our one true friend. You take part in every chapter of our lives. You listen to every song, every complaint, every hurt, every joy, every blessing, every curse. We are certain, certain of your presence and your love, and you never tire of us. For that love and friendship that is offered to all, we are thankful. In Christ, our friend's name, amen. Our hymn this morning is hymn number 382. We gather together another song of thanksgiving. This morning, if you would like to make this the place that you gather to worship and work and know one another and know God as friend, we invite you to come forward during the singing of this hymn. Unite with our congregation. I will be at the front to meet you. Let's stand together and sing.